the eggnog riot at West Point, a military Christmas story. Don't really know what this is about, but it does sound interesting. It's from the Fat Electrician, and we all know he makes amazing videos. Before we do jump into this, a lot of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. I'm getting super close to 8,000 subscribers. It'll really mean a lot if you can hit that subscribe button down below. But yeah, let's jump into this and check this out, man. It was the night before Christmas, and all the cadets at West Point got hammered, destroyed their barracks, and tried to kill several of their instructors. Huh? Today right, we're talking about one of the greatest military Christmas stories of all time, the West Point Eggnog Riot of 1826. Very important background info, West Point, the prestigious military academy, was created in 1802, and from 1802 to 1817, it was a complete shit show. It hey. had a terrible reputation for being complete and utter chaos pretty much all of the time. Cadets were allowed to come and go as they pleased, and right. then when they did show up, they were too preoccupied drinking or dueling one another to actually learn how to become effective military officers. What? Cue this man, Colonel Slyvanus. What? Wait, what kind of place is is this like a military training camp or like a military like bar there he's going to be hired as superintendent in 1817 and he's going to turn this ship around uh, he's going to come up with all kinds of radical rules and because of this he is regarded as the father of west point and when i say <laughs> okay. radical rules it was Boys, basically just him pointing out obvious shit that we shouldn't be allowed to do anymore like get drunk all day kill each other in duels and you actually have to show up to class yo that's actually mad like something like that was actually happening you get drunk all Hey, listen, to some people watching this, you guys will be like, hey, that sounds like a great time. But yeah, get drunk, having duels. Ah, the hardest of these rules to enforce was the no drinking because there was three places to buy alcohol in very close proximity to West Point. They had North Tavern, which was pretty much on West Point. Then you had this little general store type deal ran by a guy by the name of Benny Haven and his wife Lolita. And then right across the Hudson, you had Martin's Tavern. So Thayer and his war on uh -huh. alcohol buys the building that North Tavern is in, kicks them out, and turns it into a hospital. Then he instructs Benny Haven and his wife to no longer sell alcohol. To is that a hospital? to put all the people dueling in this get injured and stuff that that would make sense wait why is it a blood turns it into a hospital then he instructs benny haven and his wife to no longer sell alcohol to any of the cadets right. the only tavern left after that is martin's tavern but that's across the hudson river so he just leaves a guard on sentry duty at the dock where the boats are 24 7 to keep any cadets from going over to that tavern that's it the alcohol problem is solved or so that's they thought be see, because benny haven over here is one of the boys he was a veteran of the war of 1812 so he keeps selling alcohol under the table hush hush to all <laughs> okay. the cadets this goes on for a couple years and then Thayer finally catches Benny and his wife selling alcohol, kicks them off the West Point campus, and the rumor is they are the only two people to ever receive a lifetime ban oh, wow. from the military academy. Now, at this point, Benny and his wife have essentially lost their job and their home. Pretty much anybody would be begging for forgiveness and promising not to do it again, but Benny and his wife, Lalita, are the number one supporting characters in this story because they decide that they're going to buy a fishing shack right on the Hudson River, right outside of West Point for what? all the cadets to get to them. Benny's new tavern... Yo, this guy must have been one of the cadet's uncle or something, bro. What, what, what? He's going through all this effort for them? He, he must just love the vibe and stuff. I, I, I respect it. I respect it. It's only accessible from two different routes. You have to either get there by a boat on the Hudson River or you right. have to crawl down a 60-foot steep cliffside that has stone stairs carved into it meaning that it is treacherous for pretty much anybody, especially if you're drunk. And whether <laughs> Benny intended it to be this way or not, this actually discourages pretty much anybody except for a bunch of cadets that are trying to avoid from being <laughs> caught from drinking at his tavern. So his tavern right. is essentially just West Point cadets all the time. The only problem with that is that the West Point cadets don't actually make any money, so Benny decides he's going to give everybody a year-long tab, and he's willing to let them pay off their tab in barter. And the only thing he's not willing to what? accept is West Point military uniforms. He accepts everything else, including their shoes. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down. How is he making money? Bro, this guy really likes the cadets, man. Like, he, he's like, what year long time? Like, what? And I'm trying to tell you that a grizzled veteran from the War of 1812 has opened up a bar right outside of West Point, and all the cadets can go there, get drunk, and pay for it with shit that they've stolen. I mean, strategically <laughs> transferred to his location. So, obviously, all the cadets love this guy. He's probably the most influential bartender in American history. Oh, 100%. Any big military name from that era that went through West Point was friends with Benny Haven. Right. Ulysses S. Grant. 
homeboys. Even Edgar Allan Poe is quoted as saying that Benny was the only congenial soul in that godforsaken place. Wow. So that's the deal. That's where everybody goes to drink and get Benny. the alcohol. It's from Benny Haven's Tavern, except for the two times a year where the cadets are actually allowed to drink on campus, and that is 4th of July and Christmas. Fast uh, forward, 4th of July, 1826, all the cadets are drinking on campus openly because they're allowed to because it's 4th of July, and they get absolutely hammered at which point of they course. decided that they were going to perform a snake dance i have no idea what that is but apparently at the end of it they ran over picked up the commodore of west point major william worth carried him off to the barracks because they liked the guy so much they wanted to kidnap him so they could go drink <laughs> with him because of this superintendent thayer decides that they went too far and that there's just going to be no more drinking ever again at west point fast is a snake dance like them dancing with his body in the air? Like, what, what on earth is a snake dance, bro? Thayer decides that they went too far and that there's just going to be no more drinking ever again at West Point. Fast forward later that year, December 22nd, 1826. It's almost Christmas, and for the first time... Wait, how many years? Fast forward later that year, December 22nd, 1826. Okay. It's almost Christmas, and for the first time since West Point's inception, the cadets are not going to be allowed to throw a Christmas party on Christmas Eve and have everybody get hammered on eggnog. So obviously, they're going to do it anyways and just try not to get caught, but I mean, we're Worst case scenario, they do get caught. What's really gonna happen? You'll be shot for this? Nah, I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out. <laughs> Some of the cadets sneak off and they go across the Hudson River to Martin's Tavern where they can get a better deal on buying a bunch of alcohol and their goal is to get at least half a gallon of whiskey for the eggnog. That being said, right. anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so naturally they end up with two gallons of whiskey and they get caught by the guard on the way back, a private by the name of James Dugan, and they end up bribing him with 35 cents to look the other way. Next day, Thirty. Wait, 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 wait! Someone do the maths in my comments, please. What is the equivalent of thirty-five cents back in that day, eighteen twenty, right? To now, because for, hey, thirty-five cents, and nobody being bribed with thirty-five cents. December 23rd, all the cadets are still stealing food and anything else they could want for this party. While that's going on, the staff have their Christmas party at Thayer's house. It's at this Christmas party that Thayer decides that he's going to be a pretty cool guy. He knows that the cadets are going to uh -huh. drink tomorrow, but he's just going to turn a blind eye. He's not going to increase the amount of guards or uh -huh. the amount of staff on duty. He's just going to look the other way. He's going to have the same old two officers on staff making sure everything's okay. He knows they're going to drink. They can drink. Let them think they got away with it. It'll be fine. <laughs> so that gets decided. And the next order of Fair business enough. is to figure out what they're going to do with the class fuck up Jefferson Davis. Yeah. Like as in the president of the Confederacy in the future at this point. Wait, Apparently huh? he has quite the drinking problem and he's not very slick about it because he has the distinct honor of being the first student to ever be arrested for going to Benny's Tavern. And he just got back from being hospitalized for four months because the second time he got caught at Benny's Tavern, he tried to make a getaway and ended up falling down the 60 foot cliff on the stone stairs to get there. And he's been oh. hospitalized ever since. And he just got back to class. Fast forward again, December 24th, Yo. Christmas Eve, day of the party during the day Day, all the cadets are going out they're buying all the fresh eggs i ain't gonna lie this story is crazy already man this story is crazy already bro this is <laughs> story about a time 24th christmas eve day of the party during the day all the cadets are going out they're buying all the fresh eggs all the fresh milk from the local farmers right. some of them go over to benny's tavern they end up buying an extra gallon of moonshine in case the two gallons of whiskey aren't enough and uh, Benny's wife, Loleta, also makes him a bunch of mutton, which they're going to take back to the barracks and mm. heat in the middle of the night as a drinking snack while they're getting drunk on eggnog. Eggnog and mutton, which <laughs> is disgusting to think about. All right. Yeah, I can't lie. That sounds absolutely... I was literally going to say that sounds gross for my stomach because I've never had eggnog. So eggnog's alcoholic and it's made with egg, milk, and whiskey. Surely that isn't... Is that nice? Fast forward a couple hours. Everybody's been released for the day. They're all hanging out at the barracks. It's nighttime. It's time to get this party started. They break out the wooden buckets. They start mixing the eggs and the milk and the booze to make their eggnog. Uh, the two officers that are in charge of everybody, Captain Ethan Hitchcock and Lieutenant William Thornton, are going to bed at like 11 midnight. That's when the party's really going to start. And that's pretty much exactly uh, what happens. Hitchcock and Thornton go to bed, and then everybody else just kind of starts drinking quietly in their barracks rooms amongst themselves, hanging out in the hall, having a good time. And naturally, 
naturally, as the night goes on, things get a little bit louder and a little bit louder as everybody gets drunker and drunker. And finally, at 4 a.m., Captain Hitchcock is awoken by a bunch of noise. So oh. Captain Hitchcock gets up out of bed. He's going to go investigate, but he knows exactly what he's going to find. This dude's been <laughs> in the Army his whole life. He knows it's just a bunch of cadets drinking on Christmas Eve. It's not really that big of a deal. All he's going to do is he's going to go find the first group he can, tell them to be quiet. They're going to tell everybody else, and everything's going to be completely fine. So that's exactly what he, he does. He goes upstairs to the first of many barracks rooms. It has a bunch of cadets drinking inside of it, pokes his head in the door, and is like, hey, shut the fuck up and go to bed. And they're like, cool, our bad. And he leaves. He goes back to his room. And that should have been the end of the entire thing. So Stop Captain Hitchcock is laying in bed. Sure enough, somebody starts banging on his door. So he pops up, goes to check the door. There's nobody there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody there. That was weird. Whatever. I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> Lays back down. Five minutes later, somebody bangs on his door again. Goes. Oh, bro. Are they playing with it, man? Are they playing a... Uh, what do you call it in America? Ding dong ditch? Is that what you call it in America? We play... We, we call it knock a door run. So I checks did. the door. Nobody's there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody's there again. Shuts the door, stomps on the ground like he's going to lay back down in bed and waits there for like 30 seconds. Somebody bangs on the Small. door again. He opens the door and all he catches is the ass end of a bunch of cadets yelling tally ho hitch. Okay, now it's on. He was trying to be cool. You guys are being drunk assholes. Right. Now there's going to be consequences. So he goes upstairs. He starts kicking in doors, chewing people out, writing down people's names. He gets to one room. Two of the cadets try to hide underneath a blanket and another guy tries to take his hat and cover up his face so he can't write <laughs> his name down. The dude's under the blanket. He's like take the blanket off quit fucking around whatever they take the blanket off he sees who they are okay cool dude with the hat won't take the hat off of his face he tries to walk past him he ends up pushing him back into the room and he's like no take the hat off your face so i can see who you are and the <laughs> could he not just grab the hat off him dude doesn't do it so he's like take the hat off or i'm going to take the hat off for you and all then right he rips the hat out all of right. the dude's hands sees who it is, writes down his name, no big deal, goes over to the next room. Now, the logical thing to do here would be to go to bed and deal with your punishment in the morning. However, since they're drunk assholes at this point in time, they decide that since Hitchcock actually touched one of them, that it was an attack on their honor and they needed to retaliate. So they went and got bayonets and knives. Oh, yo, no, 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 no. Yo, yo, no, 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 bro. Don't tell. Oh, what is going on? Their honor, and they needed to retaliate. So they went and got bayonets and knives and pistols, and they were going to hunt Hitchcock down and kill him. Cut back to Hitchcock. He's making his way through the barracks. There's drunk cadets laying down in the hallway. It's a complete shit show. He makes his way into one of the bigger rooms. It has like 20 cadets inside of it, at which point he explains to them that because there's more than 12 of them, this technically constitutes as a riot and starts reading them the riot act before informing them that they're all under arrest. Then after what? placing all of them under arrest, he tells the cadet in charge of this like area or this room that he needs to open up all the foot lockers so he can find all the booze and get rid of it. And that cadet is like, no thanks. And he goes and lays down on the floor and falls asleep. At this point, <laughs> fucking Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederacy, runs in, slams the door behind him, holding the door while looking at it, and is like, guys, hide the grog, Hitchcock's coming. And then he turns around and Hitchcock's right there and he's like, oh. <laughs> Damn. At this point, Captain Hitchcock looks at Jefferson Davis and is like, take your dumb ass to bed. And he's like, okay. And then he goes to bed, falls asleep. That's the rest of the story for him. Yeah. Captain Hitchcock literally just told the future president of the Confederacy that it's past his bedtime and he listened. This man is the biggest gangster in the entire story. <laughs> Captain Hitchcock then turns around to the 20 cadets that he was just chewing out, looks at them. They look at him. He looks at them. He looks at the guy that fell asleep on the floor, not respecting his authority. And he's like, I have no idea what to fucking do right now. So he just turns around and he leaves. He walks away. And while this. Yeah, what are you going to do in that situation, bro? And where's the other guard? Wait, wait. Does he not have backup? It's just him and like just 20 cadets. More than that. Going on outside the barracks, there's an active duty private that's on sentry duty over okay. the night. And he's got a drum with him to alert everybody in case like there's a fire or somebody attacks or he just needs everybody to wake up. He has this emergency drum. And right. a bunch of drunk cadets come up to this poor private and are like, hey, give me your fucking drum set. So they steal this private's drum set and just start playing it. This ends up waking up the other officer, Lieutenant Thornton, who goes to investigate what's going on. Apparently at this point, the eggnog riot, mutiny, rebellion, whatever you want to call it, it's really kicked off and the idea is spread that we're going to kill some of the West Point staff because Thornton Aww. is immediately stopped by a student that has a fucking sword. To which Lieutenant Thornton is like, what the fuck are you doing? Put the goddamn sword down. And the drunk cadet like grumbles something, <laughs> throws the sword on the ground and then falls asleep on the floor. Cut back to <laughs> Captain Hitchcock, who has an angry mob of students hunting him and he has no idea 
idea. He's come up on another room of cadets that have barricaded themselves into their room and he's trying to kick the door down. And he finally kicks the door in and one of the cadets pulls a pistol and fires. And at the last second, one of the other cadets hits the pistol up and the bullet hits the door frame right next to Hitchcock. And Hitchcock is like, holy shit. Okay, things are getting... Oh, bro, what is going on? You know what? I can see... <laughs> I can see now why drinking is banned on campus. Do you know what I'm saying? I can, <laughs> I can see th this is mad. This is mad. And fires, and at the last second, one of the other cadets hits the pistol up, and the bullet hits the door frame right next to Hitchcock. And Hitchcock is like, holy shit. Okay, things are getting out of hand. It's time to go get help. Cut back to Lieutenant Thornton, who just got done dealing with the cadet with the sword, and then he hears a gunshot, and he's like, what? The fuck is happening right now? So he goes to investigate that, and on his way there, one of the cadets hits him in the head with a piece of firewood and knocks him unconscious. Oh, I thought he was gonna say the gun. I thought he was gonna say the gun, the pistol. Here's a gunshot, and he's like, what? The fuck is happening right now? So he goes to investigate that, and on his way there, one of the cadets hits him in the head with a piece of firewood and knocks him unconscious. Oh, so Hitchcock what? makes his way out of the barracks. He's going to find help. He runs into Private James Overton because he was looking for him, and James Overton is like, hey, your cadet stole my drum set. What the fuck? To which Hitchcock is like, yeah, well, they just tried to kill me, so obviously things are out of control. Why don't you go get the comm? Now, when he said go get the comm, he meant Commodore William Worth. However, the cadets that were off to the side overheard him, and they thought he said the bomb, and they took that as he was referring to the bombardiers, which if you don't know, West Point wasn't just a college at this point. It was also an active military base, and on that base was a bunch of bombardiers or artillerymen. And the cadets and the artillerymen absolutely fucking hated each other and had this huge rivalry, and in the cadets' drunken stupor, they took that to mean that the artillery men were going to show up and start, like, shelling the barracks or at least, like, try to attack them somehow. Aww. So they spread the word, and all the drunk cadets start fortifying their barracks for an <laughs> attack. They're putting all the furniture in front of doors. They're breaking out all the windows. They're loading whatever guns they have. They're Yo, I can't, bro. This might be one of the most weirdest, craziest stories I've heard. This, I, I wasn't expecting this when clicking on this video, bro. Th th it's amazing. This is, I, I really hope nobody gets killed, right? Because this story is just like, what is going on? Cadets start fortifying their barracks for an attack. They're putting all the furniture in front of doors. They're breaking out all the windows. They're loading whatever guns they have. They're getting ready for an actual fight. It is at this point that Captain Hitchcock <laughs> hears a bugle playing, meaning that it's time for everybody to wake up, or so he thought, because he turns around and realizes that a bunch of drunk cadets had stolen the bugle and were playing it too. He then just kind of stands there for the next couple hours watching all the cadets fortify the building for an attack that's never coming as they break out windows ruin a bunch of furniture and then eventually they all get quiet and pass out drunk waiting for this attack to come that never <laughs> actually comes so then the real bugle does yeah. actually kick off and all the other people start showing up there's a couple of barracks that weren't actually involved all those cadets start showing up the rest of the staff superintendent there and everybody is like what the fuck happened there's broken <laughs> glass everywhere there's mutton vomit all over the place there's drunk privates out in the field with a drum set like what is happening so then captain hitchcock <laughs> goes over talks to thayer explains everything that happened and he's like what do you want me to do and thayer the dude that knows everything like total hard ass he's like totally in charge even he's like I have no idea. <laughs> so they just kind of go about their day like nothing happened. Yeah. And then slowly over time, they kind of figure out, okay, well, we have to do something. So they launch a little internal investigation. They figure out that there's like 90 cadets involved in this riot. And right. 90 is like roughly a third of all of West Point. So obviously they're not going to be able to kick out everybody. So they decide okay. they're just going to take like the top 20 worst offenders and they're going to expel them. And like all but two of them were invited back the next year. So basically it was just- oh, a all but two? I wonder why the two did it get invited back i wonder why spell them and like all but two of them were invited back the next year so basically it was just a for show punishment some of the more notable Yo. names of people that were expelled include hugh mercer who ended up being a general for the confederacy in the civil war then uh -huh. you had samuel roberts who ended up being the secretary of state for the republic of texas you've got benjamin humphreys who was expelled who ended up being also a confederate general and the governor of mississippi uh jefferson davis famously didn't get a punishment at all and then you had uh john <laughs> 
Campbell, who they tried to expel, but he argued his way out of it, and he went on to sit as a Supreme Court justice later in life. Oh, Which, oh. I mean, you have to admit, between a bunch of future Confederate leaders getting That's in trouble mod. for a grog mutiny and a future Supreme Court justice arguing his way out of his punishment, it's some of the best examples of foreshadowing I've ever seen in my entire life. In conclusion, the moral of the story is that if you're gonna do the wrong thing, do it with a lot of your buddies because they can't get all of you in trouble at the same time because teamwork <laughs> makes a dream work, even if the dream is to be an asshole on Christmas. Yo, some people's gonna do some crazy stuff. Nah, bro, just do it with a bunch of people. Steve, thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go oh, by that was amazing. That Happy was amazing. Christmas, Merry, whatever the fuck you celebrate. Quack, bang. <laughs> out his this Good guy's videos on. is 10 out of 10 man i absolutely love him and laleda even makes them a bunch <laughs> i keep wanting to say fucking hummus it's not hummus it's what the fuck is it called damn it <laughs> mutton fucking mutton. Why, why am i getting mutton and hummus in my fucking head <laughs> Uh, I absolutely love his videos. Honestly, his videos are 10 out of 10. That might be one of the craziest stories I've heard. Man, that was absolutely mental. I can't lie. Absolutely love this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as well. If you didn't, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Make sure you guys thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash Alfred of G. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.